now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. President. We are grateful for the organization of today's briefing. We thank Mr. Varankov and Madam Konig for their detailed analysis of the situation vis-à-vis -vis the struggle against ISIL. We would note the proactive efforts of the bodies which they head in the drafting of the Secretary General's latest report on this issue. We listened with interest to the briefing delivered by Madam Cook. By Madam Cook. Amid the military and territorial losses, erosion of economic infrastructure, the weakening of propagandistic hubs, and the demoralization of fighters, the group's leadership is seeking any opportunity to maintain its influence. The global terrorist Tower of Babel has fallen to pieces. However, ISIL cells continue to speak in one tongue, and they are successfully coordinating amongst themselves. Following the destruction wrought to the system of hydrocarbons smuggling, terrorists have turned their focus to new sources of financial and logistical support. There have been instances noted of, spe of speculation on stock markets, and terrorists are striving to invest funds in legal sectors of the economies of a broad array of countries. ISIL adherents are actively investing in the tourism, hospitality in industry, uh, in, in uh, industry, agriculture, fish farms, pharmacology, and construction companies. Uh, the group also continues to fight for control over narcotics flows, including including from Afghanistan. Furthermore, ISIL continues to receive revenue from foreign sponsors operating under the cover of philanthropic funds, religious organizations, and other non-government bodies. Mr. President, we note with satisfaction that the starting point of the report presented today was an acknowledgment of the successes of the Syrian army in combating terrorism. This was illustrated by the intense fights against ISIL in the suburbs of Damascus. At the same time, progress has been achieved far beyond the boundaries of the Syrian capital. With the support of the Russian armed forces, more than 1,400 towns and cities have been liberated of the terrorist presence. Over 96% of Syrian territory has now been brought under the control of government troops and people's militia units. As a result, more than 1.5 million Syrian refugees have already been able to return to their home to their homes. At the same time, we are not discounting the possibility of a growing number of terrorist sleeper cells in Syria. Um, ISIL adherents are trying with all their might. They are actively recruiting minors, including children under age 12. Uh, it is entirely possible that the frequency of terrorist attacks will rise above all in the direction of Idlib. Furthermore, there's a, our, there's a growing magnitude of the threat of ISIL in Afghanistan, where, according to various assessments, there are four to 10,000 active members of the group present. A significant amount of them have been concentrated in provinces bordering Central Asian states. Mr. President, in parallel with the military, the military defeat of ISIL, it is necessary to proactively and most optimally and effectively tackle issues of holding radicals to account. In this context, it behooves us to raise the issue of the inadmissibility of attempts to supplant the functions of Syrian government bodies which are waging the battle against terrorism. As is stated in the Secretary General's report, a alongside government forces. Uh, uh, presently, arrests of ISIL members are being carried out by certain armed entities. We wish to receive more detailed information. Who specifically and on what basis has assumed these functions? What is the fate of those detained? Are there plans to hand them over to the authorities? 
We trust that we shall receive responses uh, to these bodies at specialized Security Council committees without having to await the issuance of the next report. I would reiterate, ultimately, all of those who deliver direct or indirect assistance to terrorists, not to mention the fighters themselves, need to be held to account. However, the compilation and collection of evidence, processing of evidence, and the transfer of evidence to judicial bodies needs to be done strictly in line with international law with full respect for the sovereignty of those states where ISIL crimes were perpetrated. If this factor is not taken into account, not a single initiative to investigate terrorist crimes can claim to be legitimate. For our part, Russian investigative bodies are proactively participating in such efforts on Syrian soil with the consent of Damascus officials and in cooperation with said Damascus officials. Mr. President, during the discussion of the Secretary General's sixth report in February, the Russian delegation drew attention to the blatant breach of the arms embargo with respect to ISIL. What remains open is the question of how this gang of thugs uh, put together an arsenal of weapons which for seven years enabled it more or less to resist the world's largest armies. The present report portrays the situation as if ISIL fighters are content merely with what happens to fall into their hands, robbing storage sites in the territories under their control and manufacturing improvised explosive devices. In reality, only a small share of the weapons terrorists are able to manufacture and only their most primitive models their, uh, only the most primitive models thereof are produced by those terrorists. Evidence continues to mount about arms being provided from abroad, including through semi-legal structures or even with the sponsorship of certain countries' intelligence services. We trust that there will be a detailed discussion of ways to tackle this issue during the international conference to counter illicit weapons uh, deliveries in the context of uh, the struggle against international terrorism conference to be held in Moscow on 3 to 4 September 2018. Mr. President, uh, ISIL's activity has waned, which has enabled, which has enabled, enabled Al-Qaeda to rear its head once again, with financing amounting to 20 to 40 million dollars per month. This group is strengthening its ties with affiliates in Northern Africa. It is attempting to, sec to secure control of the local criminal businesses, as well as to invest in the agro-industrial agro holdings of African countries. According to available assessments, Al-Qaeda and its allies, as ISIL is routed, may take up the initiative of countering and resisting the international efforts to resolve the conflict in Syria. To conclude, we wish to reiterate that the only way to stamp out the threat posed by ISIL and Al-Qaeda and their affiliates is to do so on a genuinely collective basis. In this connection, we are studying with interest the initiative of the Secretariat leadership to set up a network of anti-terrorist coordinators. We are convinced that strengthening practical cooperation of member states' specialized agencies constitutes an important condition for the establishment of a single UN-led counterterrorism coalition the establishment of which on a, a non-ideological basis is something which we have long called for. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement.